So I am here today to do some graphic reviews of some of the graphic novels that I have recently been reading and comics. I have picked up a few recently that have been really, really engaging and really entertaining to read. So I'm just going to launch straight into it and chat to you about what it is I've been reading. Let's get started. The first thing I have to show you guys is Number James Volume 3, A Terrible Plan. This is by Stevenson, Watters, Nowak and Lahayo. And I definitely enjoyed this. I still think that the Lumber Jane series is so much fun. It's about this group of girls. They're kind of on this summer camp and they get into all sorts of crazy adventures whilst they are there. Along the way, we see them collecting badges, kind of like they're in the brownies or girl guides, something like that. But they have fantastical beasts that come and get involved in their storylines. So the things that they end up doing to earn these badges are not the typical things you would do in brownies or guides. So I love this. I love the concept behind it. I adored the first volume. The second one I didn't like quite as much, but I still thought it was fantastic. This one let me down slightly. I still think that the characters are really developing in this. I do think that we're seeing more of them. We're seeing their relationships blossom. We're starting to really get a sense for who they are as characters. And I love that element to it. I really think that that is building over time and I'm definitely enjoying seeing that. However, I do think that the artwork and the actual storyline was a bit weaker in this one. I didn't feel like it was as strong overall. The first issue within this actually focuses on all of the girls sitting around a campfire and they are telling ghost stories and each of these stories is illustrated in a completely different style which isn't necessarily a bad thing but it does mean that it's breaking the norm and it's doing something a little bit different which I didn't really care for as much as I would have had they just continued the story in the same art style as the previous two. Some of the art styles are pretty fine, some of them I didn't care for quite as much and some of them are just downright crazy and weird but I, I still really like the concept of the book so I kept reading and I'm glad that I did because not all of this volume is told in different styles. Um, it's only the first issue but you can tell that they are quite different from the main storyline which is in this style. This page shows an example of some of the badges that they get so this one is called the Absence Makes the Heart Grow Fondant Badge instead of Fonda, haha. <laughs> I just think it's a really funny one. Each badge that they get at the start of every issue, there's a description as though it's a handbook that they are learning from. And as you can see, it's such a bright, punchy, colourful graphic novel. I would say that this is age appropriate for anyone. I would say it's completely PG in my opinion. There are some insinuations at a gay romance, but I mean, for me, that's totally fine. I don't have a problem with that. So I still think this is totally PG um, because it's slightly insinuated. It's really not obvious or anything like that. I, th I think this is a fantastic graphic novel series for kids. If you have kids who want to get into comics, then I would say that this is definitely one that I would, if I had kids, let them read 100% because it's just fun. It's really quirky and it's all about the sort of things that kids get up to, the adventures, the humour, the banter. It's just an entertaining read. However, the art style and the story did suffer a little bit in this one and didn't feel as well thought out or completed as the previous two for me. So I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I still liked it a lot, still love the colours, still love the punchiness, but I do think it could have been a little bit better than it was and I do think it's losing its way slightly. So I hope that that doesn't continue because I have heard from a few people that there's going to be a crossover of Lumberjanes and Gotham Academy. And if you remember the one that I did a few weeks ago about Gotham Academy, my review, I loved Gotham Academy and I really, really am excited for the crossover to happen between those two series and I'm definitely going to be buying that and yeah, it sounds amazing. So um, can't wait for that. So I am going to continue with Lumberjanes so that I can get to that crossover and hope that Lumberjanes gets better again because it's so good when it's good and I still really like it. The next one I have to talk to you guys about is The Sculptor. This is by Scott McCloud, and as you can see, this is a pretty hefty graphic novel. It's quite chunky. The artwork within looks like this. It is all told in sort of blue tones, and it's definitely likeable. I think the faces and stuff are easy to connect with and the characters are easy to tell apart. However, it's not my favourite style of artwork. I do prefer when we either have full colour or we have no colour but that's just a personal thing for me. If you like blue tone, then you'll probably enjoy this. 
as you can see, some of the expressions are a little bit over the top, which I'm not a huge fan of again, but it's a decent art style. I was gifted this by my boyfriend very kindly and I was really excited to get it because I'd heard so many good things about this. It follows the story of this man on the front cover and he is a struggling artist who cannot really make his work sell. He's been having a really hard time of it and he doesn't really know what to do with himself. He's just struggling. He knows that he wants to get a display out. He wants to be known as an artist. He wants people to admire him and understand what his artwork means to him. But he really is having a hard time of getting it out there and he just feels like a bit of a failure. So he one day makes a deal with someone with magical powers and he agrees to get the ability to sculpt anything from anything. He just becomes basically the sculptor of the universe in exchange for a set amount of days left to live. But of course, whilst that is happening, he meets the girl of his dreams and things start to go wrong because he cannot have a relationship if he's going to die soon. But his career is taking off and it's kind of the story of how he struggles with everything that's going on. I definitely felt like the story was stronger for me than the artwork in this. If you like the artwork, then probably it would get a better rating overall. I think for me, I liked it. I definitely connected with the character at some points, being a struggling artist and trying to get your passion and your creativity across into the world. I definitely related, but I didn't connect entirely. And I did think some of the things he did were incredibly selfish. And I didn't feel like that was how I would have reacted in the situation. So he did sometimes annoy me. Because of all that, and because the artwork wasn't my favourite, I gave it a 3.5, but I still would recommend this, especially if you do think you would relate to it or you like the artwork, so that's that. The next thing that I have to talk to you about is issues 1 through 6 of the latest instalment in the Lady Mechanica series, which is Tablet of Destinies. This is written by Joe Benitz M. M. Jen. I really enjoyed the first Lady Mechanica series that I read, as you guys know, and this one was definitely not an exception to that rule, although we do have an additional writer on the team this time, which is M. M. Chen. I think that the story wasn't quite as good in this one, but still loved the panels, still loved the dynamism, still loved the way it all rolled together and just was a fantastic story of adventure and crazy steampunk misdemeanours. I just think that the character within this is one that I really, really admire and like. And I know some people who say that she's very over-sexualised. I don't really agree. I think the art style is the art style and I just like it. I don't think she does anything overtly sexual in the books. I think she's just a strong woman. And I think it's a series that is just kind of badass, really. Kind of a badass series. And it's about this lady called Lady Mechanica who has a mechanical arm, doesn't really know why she was made the way she was. She woke up one day in a laboratory and didn't really understand what was going on and managed to escape and wants to know more about her history. But this one focuses on when a friend of hers comes to her and says that their family member has been stolen away and she doesn't know what to do. So Lady Mechanica, awesome detective badass that she is, gets involved and goes to find this family member and basically gets caught up in a whirlwind of adventure along the way. She has some fantastic outfits. She is amazing at doing crazy stunts. And she's just a wonderful character. And I really, really like that this is now a regular thing. I believe that the new arc is starting in May, sometime around then. Sometime in the next few months, for sure. And I just have really, really loved this series from the moment I discovered it. So I will definitely be buying the paperback when this arc comes out. I think that's fairly soon. And I will 100% be continuing on with the series as a whole, Lady Mechanica, when the next arc begins. I, as a whole, gave all of these a 4 out of 5 stars for this arc, but I would say that some of these got a 3.5 and some got a 4.5, so if you want to know my actual ratings for each individual issue, then you can check on Goodreads, and I will link it below to all my reviews of the individual issues, so you can see what I thought of each one. But generally, I really, really love this series, think it's a lot of fun, and it's one I would recommend if you like the artwork. The final one that I have to talk to you guys about in this video is... Sunstone Volume 2. This is by Stefan Sajik and I love this. It is such a great series. I know this isn't to everyone's tastes. It is an erotic BDSM lesbian series which is definitely not going to be for everyone but for me I think it is an incredibly empowering series, incredibly funny and incredibly cute. 
it focuses largely on the relationship between these two women rather than the actual sexual acts that they are getting involved in, although of course that does play a massive part. I do think that the focus on this is really on the relationship and the trust that these two women have for each other, which is a major, major part of responsible BDSM. BDSM is not something that should be practiced lightly. It comes across sometimes as something that you see in pornos or something that's really disgusting and vulgar. This portrayal of it is what I think real life would be like and it's what I believe it should be and I don't think it represents the porn industry and I think it really is a real life relationship that he's trying to portray. I think that the characters are fun, I think that the characters are realistic, and I think that the way they interact with each other and the way that they deal with this sexual fetish that they have is really, really true to how it would be in reality. And I have to admire Stefan Sajik for being able to do that, not only really tastefully, but also in a way that I can connect with it and I can adore the series because I truly, truly do. The artwork is incredible, I will try not to show you any pages that are hugely sexual, I think you'll agree that he has an absolute talent for drawing people and for making them into really cute page layouts. There are some really wonderful layouts, as I say, there's like broken up panels with other things and I think it works incredibly well. He definitely has a lot of creativity and I think the two ladies that are in this are just really empowered, strong women, so I definitely admire them. And I would 100% recommend this if you do think that tasteful BDSM lesbian style is going to be something you will enjoy and you might surprise yourself when you pick this up because I think it it surprised me how much I liked it. But I do love this series and I will continue to champion it until I get through all four of the volumes because I believe there are two more out and I definitely want to pick them up very soon. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I really really would recommend it if it sounds like your sort of thing. Those are all of the graphic novels that I'm going to be talking to you about today. Thank you all for watching, let me know if you've read any of the ones I talked about or if you're planning to, and I will see you all again soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat.